Greetings, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Do you have a holy Bible, or do you have an unholy Bible? Good question. The modern publishers are changing the King James Bible. They claim it's a King James, but is it really? So what they're doing is they're making changes with it. So what are some of the proof texts that you can look at to see if it's legitimate or not? Well, there's a few things that they love to attack. So let's take a look. One of the things that they like to attack is the virgin birth. And in Isaiah 7 and verse 14, we read the following. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Some of the modern Bibles will tell you, oh, well, that means young woman. And then in, uh, let's see, what book is it? In Matthew, verse uh, chapter 1, verse 23, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is... God with us. Now, one of the things that they like to do is they want you to think that, well, especially in the New Age movement, so-called, they want you to think that man can become God, but they don't want you to think that God could become a man if that makes any sense. A virgin shall be with child and bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God with us. Why is the virgin birth so important? Well, in Romans 5.12, Paul writes, Wherefore, as by one man, and who was that man? It was Adam. So, wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so, death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. See, sin passed into our DNA. In Romans 3.23, we read, For all have sinned, for all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. And if you think that all means all, no, all does not always mean all. Did Jesus sin? No. How about Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14? Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, tempted, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. See, Jesus was without sin. And that was the point of the virgin birth. It's a very important concept. So, does all mean all? Well, if all means all to the all means all people, 
That means Jesus was a sinner. And if he's a sinner, well, then he's not the Messiah. He's not the Christ. He's not the Redeemer. But in Hebrews 4, 15, it says, He was tempted in all points like we are, yet without sin. Verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly, boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So all does not always mean all. And that's why the virgin birth. And they love to attack the virgin birth. They love to. That is one of the proof tests in modern Bibles. Some of the new Bibles will just say young woman. Another point is in 1 Timothy 3.16. Paul writes, and without controversy. See, Paul says this is not even, this is not controversial. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. God came and became flesh. Not even controversial. Another reason why they hate Paul. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. The new modern Bible versions will say, he was manifest in the flesh. He who? Genghis Khan? Adolf Hitler? Joseph Stalin? Maltese tongue? Who? Who was manifest in the flesh? Every person that was ever born is manifested in the flesh. No. My King James says God. So, how about 1 John 5, 5? Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood. Even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. 1 John 5, 7. And here's the one that they like to change. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and Jesus is called the Word of God in the book of Revelation. Very plain, very clear. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Hmm. These three are one. See, Jesus is God in the flesh. But some of the modern Bible versions will say, well, these three agree. Okay. Uh, what Does three people agreeing, is that some kind of a miracle? No. But my Bible, my holy Bible says, these three are one. In Genesis 1, 26, And God said, let us, let us. And some of the people will say, well, that's angels. Uh, no, angels didn't create anything. Angels were created, but they didn't create anything. And God said, and God said, not God and the angels, no. And God said, let us, let us, plural, make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You want to see a creeping thing that creeps upon the whole earth? 
go to Washington, D.C. or London or Berlin or, yeah, you get the idea. Moscow, yeah. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Hmm. So, let us make man in our image. And one of the things, another one of the things that they'll try to do is turn Jesus into a created being. Now, Jesus was the creator. How about John chapter 1, verse 1? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And if you read the Jehovah's Witness Bible, it says that the, world, the Word became a God. Uh, no, I don't think so. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. See, Jesus created the earth. The heavens, the earth, the angels, He made it all. He, he created everything. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And in Islam and Judaism, God does not have a son. But guess what? Psalms chapter 2 and verse 7 says they're wrong. They're liars. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. You know, begotten is some strong language. It means of the same essence. And, of course, you could always go to John 3.16, possibly the most famous, well-known verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Modern Bibles, like the NIV, will say his one and only Son. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Uh, is Jesus the one and only Son? Not in the NIV. Adam is called the Son of God, too. So, people read that and they're like, uh, wait a minute, Adam is also a Son of God. So how can Jesus be the one and only Son when there's another one? Oh, see, they take out that word begotten. Big difference. Big difference. Adam was not begotten. Christ was begotten. Adam was not God come in the flesh. Big difference. So in 1 John 5.20, And we know that the Son of God has come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. This is the true God. Even in his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Big difference between that and the book of Turn to Luke. And that would be in chapter 338, Luke 338. This is the genealogy, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Adam was the son of God. 
Look at Job 38. That'll tell you. The angels were called sons of God. Adam is called the son of God. But Jesus is called the only begotten son of God. So this is just a few proof texts that you can look at. And of all the books that claim to be a Bible, the NIV is one of the absolute worst. Um, I think his name was Charles Chambers. He was a Pentecostal preacher up in one of the Carolinas. Did an interview with a lady called Virginia Mollencott. She's part of the LBGT crowd. Uh, around 20 some odd years ago, uh, he did this interview with her. And um, she was an avowed lesbian. Uh, she's proud of it. Oh yeah, I'm a lesbian. And I was on the NIV committee. And uh, of course, when she came out of the closet bragging about how she worked on the NIV, uh, they kind of, first they denied she worked for them, but she's like, look, I saved every paycheck stub you clowns uh, gave me and she showed them, yeah, well, I worked for you guys, you bunch of liars. And then I says, well, oh, okay, yes, yeah, she did work for us, but she didn't have any work of any consequence. And uh, he had her on an interview, and he was not trying to argue with her. Uh, he was just asking her questions, you know. Oh, hey, how was your uh, work on the NIV? And, you know, this and that and the other. And he, he, he wasn't condemning her. He was just asking her questions, wanted her to, uh, you know, open her mouth and hang herself. And they didn't like, you know, the NIV people didn't like that. So, but... You know, nowadays, here we go, 20 years later, does anybody care? No, they're trying to uh, recruit our, uh, yeah, you know, the, the ones in the uh, elementaries level of education. Yeah. Oh, boy. So, matter of fact, in the original version of the 80, uh, NIV, 1984, uh, you couldn't even you, you couldn't even find two verses that uh, showed you that a certain perversion was even a sin. You know something that Gomorrah was famous for. I I don't even want to say the other sister city, but got to be careful. But you know. But what they did was, there was a lady that um, Gail Ripplinger did some phenomenal research on all this kind of information. And uh, what they would do is they would take her book, and let's say she used the 1984 NIV. Well, then in 1987, they did a revision of the NIV and changed some things. And then they would go to her book and say, oh, well, she says the NIV says this, but my NIV says something different. So she's a liar. What they didn't tell you is they changed the wording, possibly because of her book. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. But they'll accuse her of being a liar and this and that and the other, but they used a different... Uh, Maybe it wasn't 87. Maybe it was 89. I forget. They did some rever uh, revisions of the NIV. So, yeah. Now, there was a revision for the King James. I forget what year. Originally, it came out in 1611. I think they did a revision. I think it was 1768 or 69, somewhere around there. But all they did was standardize the spelling. They didn't change things. Okay, if you were in the UK and you were asked to spell color and you said C-O-L-O-R, you would get it wrong. That's misspelled. See, color in the UK is C-O-L-O-U-R. Honor, like honor thy father and mother, H-O-N-O-U-R. 
But if you spelled honor that way in uh, college class in the United States, you'd get it misspelled. You'd, you'd get a mark. So they just standardized the spelling. That's all they did. And uh, by the way, most people that teach English as a second language overseas, they teach the British um, way. So, you know, it's... Uh, and being that the... Um, uh, you know, England was the creator of English. <laughs> you know, what can I tell you? So, in 1 John 4, 9, in this was manifested the love of God toward us because God, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. See, They'll, a lot of people say that Jesus became God. No, Jesus didn't become God. Jesus was God. But they'll deny that God could become man. But they want us to think that God, man could become God. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that, people. When Jesus was up on the mountain and was transfigured, uh, in Matthew 3.17, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I don't remember God ever saying that about Adam or, you know, the angels. Luke 9.35, And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And there, uh, Mark 1.11, And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. In John chapter 10, verse 22, And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter, the feast of the dedication of the temple. Uh, they call it Hanukkah. Now, people say, oh, because this is mentioned in the Bible, that's proof that Hanukkah was instituted by the Lord. Yeah, I, you got to read into that. It's just telling you, you know, it was the, the at Jerusalem, Feast of the Dedication, Hanukkah, and it was winter. Well, Hanukkah is always winter, right? Verse 23. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the you-know-whos round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Come on, Jesus, don't beat around the bush. If you're the Messiah, the Christ, tell us plainly. You know, don't be beating around the bush. Out with it. Spit it out. Come on. Verse 25, Jesus answered them, I told you, I told you, and ye believe not. See, I told you guys, you don't believe nothing. I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. You know, the miracles that Jesus did, uh, you know, some of the prophets might have done a miracle or two that Jesus did, but none of them did all the miracles that Jesus did. Raising the dead, healing the sick, casting out devils. Um, I don't think there was any Old Testament prophet that saw, uh, cast out devils. Not that I can think of off my, you know, top of my head. I mean, one might have raised the dead. One might have healed some sick or a leper, you know, but Jesus did all that and more. So, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye, the you know who's, but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice. Do you hear the voice of the great shepherd? I hope so. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. 
and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. No other person on this earth, past, present, or future, can ever say that. Then the you know who's took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The you know who's answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Hmm. Did Jesus tell them, oh, oh, wait, guys. No, 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 no. I, I didn't mean that. You guys misunderstand. Let me explain. No. No. Jesus told them they understood perfectly what Christ meant. I and my Father are one. And for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Right? Emmanuel, God with us. But, you know, see, these are the kind of things that they'll, they love to change. And what they will probably do, well, they've already done it, but they will probably, well, they're, they're already talking about it, but they're probably going to get rid of the King James one day, claiming that it is uh, hateful, you know, that the kind of speech that's, uh, yeah, that a certain group of people don't like, uh, who will remain nameless, you know, the new, you know who's. So, and you know what? When you find out, that um, the NIV Bible is printed by Zondervan. Zondervan's parent company is called Harper Collins. Collins was the name of the family of vampires in Dark Shadows. They're also considered one of the uh, one of those secret society groups, the Collins family publishers for a long, long time. But HarperCollins also sells the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan. Oh, yeah. The parent company, the NIV, sells the Satanic Bible. You know, birds of a feather flock together. Can two walk together except they be agreed? And that's in the Bible, by the way. Birds of a feather flock together and can two walk together except they be agreed? So maybe the NIV is a satanic Bible. You know who the parent company for the HarperCollins is? The News Corp. Uh, they ought to call it the News Corps, you know, dead body. Um, you know them as Fox, the Fox Network, television network. Yeah, he, he's originally from um, Australia. I think he went to England and now in the U.S. I don't know. But yeah, when you're, only, when you're watching Fox, huh, that's parent company of the uh, Satanic Bible NIV people. Yeah. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah. And by the way, he was given a knighthood uh, I think it was the Knights of Columbus, you know, a Catholic Masonic Lodge thing. Uh, yeah, it makes you wonder. Uh, the owner, Rupert, you know, the, the guy named Murdoch. Yeah, yeah, they're changing. They're even changing the Bible. Now, if you're interested, 
you could use some of the proof texts that I showed you. Or there is a thing called the Pure Cambridge Edition. And you could put it on your computer. And you could actually go to a print store and actually print and bind your own Bible for the Cambridge, you know, the Pure Cambridge Edition, which uh, Bible scholars that know far more about this stuff than I do claim that the Cambridge Pure Cambridge Edition is true to the Word of God. So if I remember, I'll put the link up so that you can, uh, you know, either download it. Uh, you could download it as a PDF and then print it. If you wanted, you could just print it to uh, standard 8.5 by 11.5 uh, paper and then, you know, bind it up or whatever and keep it around. Because there's going to come a day when the King James is going to be illegal. I can already see that happening. I mean, right now, they're, they've got laws on the books right now where they can get rid of it. It's just that they're not either not enforcing it or there is no uh, prescribed penalty yet. You know, just because, you know, like jaywalking. Uh, jaywalking is illegal and there's a penalty. Either you get a fine or jail time or whatever, you know. But there are laws on the books against this, but there's no penalties yet. But all they got to do is amend the law and add a penalty. And uh, I think it'll be beheading, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Matthew 24 says beheading. Mark 13 says beheading. I think it's Luke 21 says beheading. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So, all righty, uh, you know, those are some of the major things that they will change with the modern Bibles. One of the things that they do also is they will remove words. And one of the things that I did when I first came back to the Lord was I would take like a, a lot of different Bibles and I'd lay them on the floor and I would read from the King James and then I would read all the different other versions and look at the things that they altered, you know, changed or removed. And the items that they would remove or change let me know the direction that they were hiding uh, what they wanted to hide or didn't want us to know. And of course, your so-called Bible scholars will tell you that, well, you know, the King James adds things. You know, they the, the new Bibles don't remove things. The King James added things. So let's look at something the King James adds. All right, go to Matthew 17. Verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came a certain man kneeling down to him, Jesus, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For often, uh, oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. You see, this guy was possessed of a devil, demon-possessed. And I brought him to die to the disciples. I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Now remember, Jesus had given his disciples power over devils. And they couldn't cast this devil out. So Jesus is mad at them. Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. 
And Jesus rebuked the devil. Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured. Cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? Uh, wait a minute, we tried and we couldn't do it. Why couldn't we cast this devil out? Hmm, good question. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So Jesus is saying your lack of faith. And then that's the end of it in the modern Bibles. Oh, okay, well, I didn't have enough faith. That's why I couldn't cast this devil out. But the King James says in verse 21, How be it this kind, this kind what? This kind of devil goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Ah, so I'll be, evidently this was a very high-ranking devil, a very powerful devil. So this kind of devil doesn't go out but by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. The modern Bibles delete that. Do you think the devils would like you to know that by prayer and fasting you could cast them out? No, they don't want you to know that. And, and they're going to tell you, well, pfft, you couldn't cast him out because of your unbelief. You know, if you're not healed at a Benny Hinn thing, he'll say, oh, well, you didn't get healed uh, because uh, you didn't uh, believe and you didn't have a faith. Uh, praise uh, Jesus. Uh, send me a donation. Yeah. Here's my, yeah, make the check out to Benny Hinn Ministries. Yeah. You see, they delete that whole ver they delete that whole sentence. Prayer and fasting. You can't cast out a devil. Prayer and fasting. Very important. But it's not in a lot of the modern Bibles. They don't want you to know that. Think about it. You know, we could do this for hours. All I know is, stick with the King James. Check these proof tests. Text. Text. And, uh, you know, pure Cam Cambridge edition. You can't go wrong, my opinion. Not that I got all the answers figured out, but, uh, you know. Uh, it's, what a mess. I don't know where everybody lives, but um, we got a dollar store here. And uh, I saw they had a case of uh, King James Bibles. The print was really small on the, uh, the entire New uh, uh, Bible. It was Old and New Testament. You know, what do you want for a dollar? You know, cheap. And then they had some paperbacks that were... Uh, uh, New Testament only. So I bought some of those too. Eh, stack them away, you know. Might come in handy. I couldn't read the small print. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm getting old. You know. 30-something uh, years ago, when I, uh, I bought some books to start my library, when I first came back to the Lord, and uh, no problem reading it. And then... I looked at them like a couple years ago and I'm like, I can't read this print anymore. Didn't have any problem before. So yeah, people laugh at me when I got to get out the magnifying glass. So of course, you know, gray hair. What can I tell you? All righty. So that's just some things to look at and, and give you an idea. I mean, by no means is this a exhaustive search of things to look for but those seem to be the things that they attack most uh, it seems like you know what they want to do is uplift man 
and down, push down Jesus. They want to bring us to his level and push him down to our level, if that makes any sense. Now, Jesus is God in the flesh. And uh, I have people say, well, you know, I don't understand the Trinity, the Godhead, whatever. You know, you got to realize, the Bible clearly teaches that man has a body. We all have a body. Otherwise, you're dead. The Bible teaches that you have a soul. The Bible teaches you have a spirit. And we were made in God's image. Body, soul, and spirit. We are three parts that make up one person. Why can't God be the same if he made us in his image? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You know, do I understand the Godhead? Not really. I've got a very, very elementary level of understanding. I mean, I'm not even sure about the difference between the spirit and the soul, but the Bible makes it clear that the spirit and the soul are not the same. I've heard, read other people's uh, opinions on it and sort of kind of makes sense. But the thing is, I haven't gone into it deep enough to really understand it as well as I would probably like to. All I know is there's a lot of evil out there, people, and it's they're going to make the Bible illegal one day. So, and by the way, they are already changing the King James. They're already doing it. That's why I made this video. So, alrighty, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.